Hello and welcome. Uh, today we are going to be dancing with Jacques Valenta and um, I'm super excited. Uh, I only got to meet you maybe a year ago yeah. uh, when you started uh, applying for yeah. uh, Escort Hall, the choreography yeah. MA. Uh, MA yeah. uh, but seeing your work and getting to know mm -hmm. you a little bit has got me very intrigued and excited okay. to dance with you. So mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. so happy to have you here. How would you introduce yourself for someone who hasn't met you mm. before? Maybe you could start there. Okay, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Jacques Valenta. I uh, have a long run in performing arts. I'm saying performing arts, not dance. You know, because uh, I did a variety of uh, of work. I mean, in past three decades, over the three decades, I work with uh, all kinds of forms, genres, people, uh, everything around the the everything around the theater and everything around the performing. Mm, yeah. So basically, I would describe myself as a as a kind of bucket of <laughs> all, all kinds of influences, uh, 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 yeah, on my own personal impressions of uh, my surroundings, society, myself in it, uh, people in it. Uh, there's something that my work is going towards a lot. It's a kind of biographical. Mm. Yeah. Not my own, but uh, but also biographical of other people, places, uh, times. Mm. I go back very much in a timeline. Mm. I also look at the lineage a lot. Mm. Uh, I get inspired by uh, different uh, people in this lineage and in timeline and stuff like that. And. Uh, and the one thing is also consistent all the time, it's urge to dance it, to perform it through the dance, through the body. Since I was uh, two, three years old. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, the, I'm this one of the, of, the, of the born like that, you know, like Lady Gaga say, born this way. You know, I know it's cliche, but it's very true. It's really true. I love it. I'm also, yeah, I can feel it, her, I can feel all Madonna and everybody who, who needs to do it. Yeah, this is also me. And uh, yeah, my, uh, my part was uh, really, really uh, long, mm -hmm. I would say now. And it turns in a completely unexpected uh, moments, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Starting with the ballet and then uh, moving towards the clubbing and, uh, you know, leaving the ballet, just uh, performing and clubbing around. And then I got in love with the, with the, with the contemporary dance at the time called contemporary. Yeah. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. But then I also thought then after a while, I got interested very much in physical theater. And I was like, yeah, yes, this is what I wanted. Then after physical theater, I also um, got in, uh, interested in uh, a little bit in, uh, in uh, Steiner's Eurythmy mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. This was a recent. Mm. Yeah, because in some sense, but one thing led to another. It, it's not so messy that, it's, that it sounds, you know, like. And uh, finally, um, I decided to come to former Doha. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which I always love, and now it's called Escaja, but it's still there, I think. And now I'm here. Yeah, you see, I, I love the, this image of you walking around with your bucket, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sort of also trying to deal with these things you've collected in f the form of biography and stuff. I imagine you some reason on a beach, <laughs> but I don't know why. Um, but uh, tell us. Um, what are we going to do today, uh, me and you? And also, how, how could people maybe have a taste of it or have a try mm. of it at home? Yeah. Actually, we're going to try out something, something together. I kind of like that we try uh, out uh, something that uh, 
can also catch us on guard, mm -hmm. both of us, mm -hmm. even though we are experienced, uh, maybe we are too much also experienced in a, some sense, but, but I like that, uh, that uh, we at least try to, to re take a risk yeah. and see what's happened. But for the for the listeners, uh, uh, listen, guys, I'm I'm not gonna put you in the risk. I really I want you to be safe. Uh, so so I also do a, I also do a lot when I work with the people. I make safe environment. So I'll do it for also for you listeners. So basically, if I give instructions yeah. for the listeners, yeah, then two of us can also uh, listen and. Yeah, just yeah. do it later Absolutely. as well, you know? Absolutely. and then we can talk about it, and maybe people can relate later mm. on in uh, with what they actually try. So there is a, I will tell a little bit, a little bit instru instructions that I had in mind for the listeners. Mm -hmm. I would love you who listen this pod pod podcast uh, to try this uh, with me and Peter by yourself at home also you can uh, if it's two or three of you and if you are if they are willing to join you it's fine you can all try it whatever you are at home in a studio in a workplace i don't know whatever whatever you feel like uh, comfortable to try this uh, and uh, wherever it's handy for you mm. so basically uh, the first thing uh, what would be interesting for me to do is go to the go to your wardrobe and uh, look all your clothes and uh, and pick the one pick the one combination or one uh, something you want to wear that is uh, uh, clothes that reminds you of the last time that you danced, or you wanted to dance, mm -hmm. but you didn't, or 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 doesn't matter if you dance or not, it's just the the it's just the dress or the suit or whatever that you feel like you could dance in, mm -hmm. and bring it out of your wardrobe, and just hang it somewhere, and uh, have a look, take a look at it. And look at the texture, the color, look at the material. And by looking also try to memorize where this piece of dress or clothes came from, when, and uh, how. And, uh, and you can... Uh, you can uh, put it on if you like, if you can as well. <laughs> and while you put it on and having this memory of it, you can just walk around the room. And uh, I will also read a little bit text for you now. And uh, you can just... Uh, walk around the room or just sit in uh, somewhere, look at this dress, have this memory and listen to this piece of text. Fuck you, roots. Long live water lilies. The roots holds back. Water lilies float freely on the surface of the world. They are the pontons of the New World tributaries. Ponton is a water, border, frontier, stopover, home and steam for all those tired of false tradition, bad authenticity, appropriation of space. The borders of the nation, one culture, one religion, one belief. Ponton releases ballast water according to ethnic, cultural myths, 
national, linguistic, racial, sexual, and gender purity. Ponton is not interested in anything in particular because Ponton is interested in, in absolutely everything. All countries, all people, all races, genders, and sexes. All politics of humanity, but also the humanity of politics. No. Beautiful. Okay, this was a bit of text. Um, now, you can also stay with this, with all this, stay a little bit with text, stay a little bit with dress, with your memory. You can also go to your phone also, or any device and just play some music for yourself. And you can all, you can sit in your chair and listen and just stay a little bit with all this. Or if you really like to dance and, uh, and uh, move, that would be great that you play some music and also dance anything you feel like uh, you want to in, on this point and uh, dance gently and uh, dance uh, with all your heart and emotions and uh, really enjoy yourself when you are dancing. Yeah. And dance as long as you want. Beautiful. Great. So then um, we're going to do this for half an hour uh, now and you at home can pause and this is brilliant. Look for some clothing in your wardrobe, which something which reminds you of a dance or a time when you've danced or makes you want to dance in. Yeah. And then you look at it, you bring it out of the wardrobe. You look at it, you look at its textures, colors, materials. Yeah. You think about where and when and how it came into your life. Yes. You can put it on, but you don't have to. Mm. Uh, if you if you can put it on, you exactly. can as well. Yes. And then you can listen to the text, and I will put the text maybe in the description. Is that yes, okay? please. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you can gently. Oh no! First, then you can choose some music. Yes. And you can walk maybe in the clothes or with the memory of the clothes. Absolutely. Or you or just sit in the chair and just. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just Let it uh, stay with us, uh, stay with all this. You, yeah. to... And then, uh, and if you wish, you can also dance gently from the heart. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's, Great. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> all right. We will pause and we will be back in a minute to, well, in 30 minutes to chat. To share the experience. Yes. Yeah, with the listeners. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow for the wow for I mean ending was beginning. I love the uh, ending. Yeah. But it feels like there's something about coming coming out. Yeah. <laughs> like um finding uh f f like finding that romance and finding that power through the the clothes and through the music and through dancing with one another as well mm -hmm. like there's a great joy and romance in the coming together and being together and allowing mm -hmm. these histories and these stories to sort of interwind and weave with what is happening in the now um yeah how how is it for you yeah. <laughs> Oh, basically, I don't know, you know, for me, it's like um, uh, when I dance, 
Oh, oh, I think dance is uh, it's uh, it's also a very erotic discipline, mm. and uh, I love that. Mm. And it's also so, uh, and it's also for me it was like uh, this kind of uh, beautiful erotic morning warm up <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with you, of course, as yeah. well. Yeah, it's also. Uh, I dance to seduce. Yeah, I go against this a uh, little bit against this. Uh, sometimes uh, other people think differently, but for <laughs> me, it's uh, erotic. It's seduction. It's uh, body, mm -hmm. sensual body. It's uh, it's imagination that straight away when I dance yeah. becomes a kind of. Mm. Soft mm. and sensual, mm. somehow. You know? mm. Yeah. And also by uh, looking at other dancing, mm. yeah. I cannot escape this seductive yes, yes, feeling. Yes, yes, yes. I, I so have. often have it when I'm watching a performance and I'm like, I want to be up there. I want to do that. I want to yeah. feel it. I want to be in. Mm. And you keep saying warm up, but I'm wondering, would foreplay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we could call it. We could. It's a bit kinky, but we could call that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, warm up. It it is a kind of foreplay for for performance yes, in some sense. You know, if we, I love it. Uh, I love it. The warm up session that Boris Sharmaz did in a Tate Gallery with oh, the I audience. It's called warm up the audience. Ah, yeah. And I was always thinking like, like yeah. Of course, you know, I love to be. Uh, observed by audience. Yeah. I love this this, this uh, moment of attention to mm, me. Mm, mm. But I also love if they could come and uh, also dance with me. Mm. And if they can feel everything and they can go with uh, with uh, yeah. So this is what I like also by this Charmaz did it uh, in a Tate gallery. He did it uh, when he did his uh, dances. Yeah. Of twenty century, of oh, twenty dancers for twenty century. Okay. Yeah. He started the whole session in a Tate Modern, in London, in uh, by warming up the audience. Oh wow! Like a, so, it was like almost like uh, yeah. they had a session with yeah. like yeah. foreplay. Yes. For, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and also like the thing of performance is so. It's such a an amazing quality, and it mm. it really captivates dance right mm. i mean we we tend to think through the lens of performance but it it allows for these characters and you said mm. uh this like these small things i think you might have said it just before we started recording mm. these small things changing the big picture absolutely right? absolutely yes uh, you know while we when we finish the mm. the little mm. dancing together yeah <laughs> and uh, and while we were dancing uh, I love this, all these clothes that we've put in the studio over here, uh, because the little things, for example, if you put a blue wig, or if you, or, yeah, yeah. it's a wig hat, I don't know, it's, it's yeah, a blue it's a, one, so, yeah. and you take it off, and you put uh, something else, or you just take it off, it completely changed the... Uh, where you move, mm. the way you feel, mm. the way how mm. the things goes further, mm. Mm. it's completely not the same. So the small things change mm. the whole big picture yeah. of things. I was always uh, very, very uh, keen on the, and also very, uh, uh, very interested in uh, in, uh, in these small things that change everything. You know, in mm. some sense, you know, yeah. And I think they have a power. These small things, the details, mm. they have a lots of powers. They are in the periphery. Mm. They, uh, uh, but the periphery always influence the yeah. center, yeah. you know. And I was always, you know, when I watched the performances as well, the somebody who is in the center was always supported by the periphery very mm. strong mm -hmm. in some sense. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and it's it's also those those little peripheral changes and shifts that like allow us to do different things. Like I was seeing Cunningham come up or maybe even mm -hmm. um, who's the British uh, artist? Uh, Michael Clark. Michael Clark, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah sort yeah, of come yeah, up yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. 
I know so I had to think of like as a child when I would dress up in mm. in dresses and feather boas mm. and and how it like affords one to sort of play with like w- w- what's possible and yeah. I think that's so often in the erotic and in the sensorial and in, yeah. in the sort of Absolutely. in the bedroom <laughs> of yeah. like trying to um, afford different roles and different ways of being uh, mm-hmm. with one another and in society. It's almost like mm-hmm. a carnival or a festival. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the child of the 80s, right? And, uh, and this, uh, this decadent, mm. nice time when uh, um, dance and, uh, and music and high fashion and fashion in general, street fashion uh, was uh, coming together. Mm. So, and the dancers were like uh, stars, right? The same as was a fashion designer, the same as was a... But you could also be uh, your own uh, st- your own fashion designer and your own, uh, yeah, star in some sense, mm. you know? And I kind of captured there mm. my kind of uh, expression of the stardust yeah. fantasy that I always had a little bit. But... Uh, but the thing is that with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with the performing, it's like everything for me. Everything it's coming uh, uh, all at once at the same time. You know, like I cannot separate character, something biographical, some kind of uh, place where I'm going into my fantasy, some kind of uh, association for the moment, like uh, what's happening uh, here and now as well, you know, like watching you and being uh, first time with you in a studio and, uh, mm. and also seeing this figure of yours that takes me somewhere else as well, you know, there's another world mm. over there. Mm. So the whole these things happens uh, all at once. And I like this, uh, that this, this overwhelming experience of too much things, you know, because uh, that kind of also pushes me to see to see, okay, so how can I deal with all this? You know, like if I if I just go for the for the costume, then I lose you. Or if yes. I go for just for you, then I lose myself. Mm. Then a costume doesn't matter. Mm. Mm. Or if I look at the book, but it's also also sometimes you know if I look at the book and I look at you in a space and you were in this. Uh, Beautiful, uh, uh, I think. Uh, is it the green dress? No, the one that it's. Ah, uh, uh, the gentle? white, yeah. the tight white and yeah. sort of shiny yeah, 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 dress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At that point, I was uh, turning off the pages of the book, mm. which is about Swedish burlesque history, okay. yeah. and I came on the on the on the page where the where was the Pope, <laughs> right? And it was like so amazingly, you know, like if you put just a little bit of attention, it was like, mm. uh, yeah, I was thinking like, yeah, he could be the Pope yeah. in this, <laughs> in this, uh, a dancing Pope yeah. in this, yeah. what is, uh, yeah. well, in this dress as well, yeah. or in this costume that yeah. he, there is a, there is a certain uh, things that emerge. Mm. Mm. For me, you were wearing this uh, pantsuit. Yeah. And it, it, the, 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 the quality you and it gave to the room was this sort of authoritative Absolutely, uh, yes. power Absolutely. character. Yeah. And you, you were in the chair and you were observing. And I think you mm. had your glasses on at this yeah. point. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I then I, I wanted to put it on. And I wanted to. And then you, at that point, you were in a, a small dress. And to play with like allowing that authority and then allowing it to be corrupted as well by the mm-hmm. dance with this new character that you had sort of formed through the this dress that you were wearing it's yeah it's amazing that yeah. uh, you mentioned that dress i mean it's pants and uh, ah, yeah, yeah the jumpsuit yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no no the one that you just mentioned now oh, sorry yeah uh, yeah yeah it's uh, the one that makes space and everything more authority kind of mm. but you see for example that dress it pulls me more into the character. 
you know, and I, I really perform character there because that dress probably need that, that mm-hmm. outfit, that costume needs a, a more character playing for mm-hmm. me. And I immediately uh, recognized uh, the character as uh, the dramaturgist, you know, like, because I, I'm a little bit obsessed with, uh, with the physicality and appearance of the mm-hmm. dramaturgist mm-hmm. in a theater. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I love I loved how they, they, how they um, embodying uh, they role, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. and I always, I always liked this figure over there who is a bit authority figure looking <laughs> over us and uh, thinking, you know, like thinking. Yeah. So, and yeah. this costume is about thinking, you know, yeah. and, uh, and uh, yeah, and I could, I don't mind to be descriptive. I don't mind also to be sometimes very, very mm-hmm. illustrative. It's fine. I mean, I was, so we had these, this text at the beginning mm-hmm. um, and something that really struck me was how uh, it, 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 it gave me a sense of really like punk, a sort of like <laughs> punk aesthetic of yeah. uh, reclaiming and sort of thing, uh, you know, and you speak about the 80s and that transition. Mm-hmm. And there is something about claiming and claiming the dream and um, mm. Yeah, I just wondered, like, how, how is it, is it, yeah, what is that emancipatory thing for you, that sort of punk aesthetic, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I came a bit, uh, I'm not a punk generation, I came a bit later. I'm, I'm, I would say maybe I capture it a little bit, but I'm, I'm more like a post-punk mm. kind of generation, you know, because, yeah. But uh, and I was not, uh, I was never really the part of the real punk scene. But the post-punk uh, echo was resonating with me. Also with the uh, with the uh, with uh, all this decadency and a uh, f- little bit falling in part of the world. It starts already yeah. in the late eighties, right? Mm. I know, like um, you could sense it. And the second part of the 80s was like already a little bit uh, melancholic, a little bit went also a little bit in the... Because where were you yeah. living, can I ask? Uh, at the point, yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, fortunate, I must say, I was fortunate to live in the country that was a bit utopia. Right. And, uh, and a country that never belongs to the East or the West, Never, never was a colonial country or a, or a country that uh, that uh, was uh, involved in any kind of playing uh, mm. powers, you know. Like, mm. and also the country that has a completely different uh, idea of the ownership as mm. well. You know, mm. that's a former Yugoslavia, okay. uh, and. Uh, there is a lot uh, to explore from this uh, 50, 50 years of history of this country, yeah. because we were like a, we were like advanced model of uh, living over there in yeah. some sense. You know, just last night, you know, I don't know, it was just you know when you go before bed and you, then you are searching before everybody does, uh, mm. looking mm. at uh, some clips on the YouTube and everywhere. I just, uh, last night I was just uh, looking at this clip that uh, about Yugoslavian passport was the most wanted passport in the world. Wow. Because uh, there was like, the, this passport was like uh, welcome in uh, more than uh, 100 countries around the planet, you know. So, and of course there is a, there is a, controversy around the figure of the president Tito. Mm. But it, at that time, the one, the two things were very, uh, very nice and very important. And that we were like allowed to have a Western influence mm. and we were allowed to have a Eastern influence. Mm-hmm. We were not, uh, yeah, we were not uh, kind of, uh, yeah, we were not uh, um, forbid to yeah. look to West. So we were traveling West, we were traveling East. We could see what was, uh, what was uh, uh, Soviet Union uh, doing in arts and in uh, culture, and we yeah. were looking at the New York and London yeah. and Paris. So I think this is maybe why <laughs> we are over there when we, we are over there kind of so so experimental, playful, yes, also yes. a little bit 
anarchistic, yeah. punky. Yeah. yeah, that was a, that was a, yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, because there's a real freedom mm. uh, in this in this dance in what we did mm. today of really allowing and almost um, not caring for the cliches a little bit. Like mm. let's let's invite them in. And I was surprised with the music, actually. I expected something maybe a bit more dramatic, but it was quite subtle mm -hmm. and it was quite atmospherical. Yeah. And even though it had like pop songs in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was really nice mm -hmm. because it, it lended itself to um, a sensibility and really listening to and that gentleness that you spoke about when you introduced mm -hmm. the exercise and you said, you know, uh, have a gentle dance, a dance from the heart. Yeah. Um, I have to think of, you know, when I was a child and I would dance in my room, you know, for hours, you know, and this yeah. sort of like play. Me, me too. Yeah, I mean, when you yeah. said uh, I started yeah. when I was yeah. three, me two, too. did you say yeah. me too? So I'm also in the club yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of that uh, cliche, maybe, but it it's just um, it's a it's a wonderful feeling to remember and to captivate and to hold on to and protect. Uh, I don't know. For me, for me, uh, uh, as uh, as long as I go with the dancing and uh, yeah, I love dancing and I I think I'll dance unt until I die. You know, <laughs> because that's for me a, a kind of something that that I hold on the whole of my life and something that I that is a almost like continuation of uh, of since I I am mm. conscious of me you know mm. there was always the dance was always there I can always trust it I can always uh, I can always go go there yeah in uh yeah I don't know you know it's um, um it's a supportive uh, uh, for me, it's a it's a supportive. Uh, it's things that that uh, that um, supports everything in some sense. When I uh, when I kind of uh, um, yeah, when I dance, I kind of dance from the place more and more. I realize that the whole the whole dancing or all choreographies which is a two different things, not necessarily mm. the same thing. They come from the memory, for me. They come from the memory, from the place that we memorized. I, I guess it's coming from the, I don't know if we could go in the, in the, in the specific definition of, uh, of things, but I could say collective memory. Mm. I don't want to use these uh, mm. uh, these terms Jungian or Freudian or anything because I don't know about that at all, you know, and I'm not interested in uh, psychology and uh, these things. But in a kind of uh, in, in our memory, let's say our memory, because you know I cannot claim uh, any ownership of anything I do. You know, it's not it's not it doesn't coming it doesn't come from me. This movement doesn't come from me. This uh, this it's coming from us. From uh, when I'm saying us, I'm thinking of uh, people and the world before us, and something that is uh, right now, right here. But also, perhaps I don't know because I don't have that experience. I have a little bit of experience of past and present, but I don't know what the future uh, looks like, but I can sense it mm -hmm. somewhere, future, that sometimes something is also come. You know, when you catch, your, when you catch yourself in a, in, a, in a, if you are allowed, of course, you catch yourself suddenly, okay, I'm in the future. Oh, oh I'm just with the one uh, leg over there in the future for the moment, you mm -hmm. know, like, I didn't know that this is coming. But it came, you know, like, because this morning I didn't know that uh, you will be in that dress, in that, uh, in that studio seven, yeah. and you will be doing uh, uh, some jumps around, yeah. you know. That yeah. was like for me, yeah. But, but in, when I see it, something that is coming from the future, it's also, it's also familiar to yeah. me. Yeah. 
this is where I this is where things get complicated, you know, yeah. description, you know, yeah. like yeah. Where is this coming from and is this vision, is this uh, memory, what is, what is the vision, memory and uh, real experience happening? Mm. What is, what mm. is uh, all this? And, and it goes back to a little bit what you had said right at the beginning of th this felt like we just warmed up and it, it speaks to, for me, like a memory of and, and also the experience of, I also had it that one just wants to continue because like mm. I feel like I get to a place in the dance where it's almost like an ecstasy it becomes an addiction somehow because it is allowing for and incorporating all that desire and dream and vision and memory and past and future and present all mm. at the same time that it becomes timeless. Yesterday I was teaching my students and they were improvising and they were doing quite a performative improvisation. Oh, and I had to stop because of time and, you know, like mm. schedules and stuff. But there, for, for me, there was a real sense of like, oh, but why? You know, mm. like yeah. there's a desire to just keep dancing. And you speak about that you want to dance till you die, but I'm almost taking it literal. Mm. like. Like there's there's something that comes in that space where mm. we speak and maybe it's a, a erotic or maybe it's sensorial or uh, like but it's it's maybe it's honest you know there's mm. um there's a a freedom mm. of like uh, expression and being and yeah there feeling. is there is a certain uh, there is a certain uh, uh, vulnerability which is always uh, vulnerability always consists of the honesty and uh, truth as mm. well you know yeah. like when we went to the fingers to each other you know like uh, there is uh, there is vulnerability over there and a truth and, uh, and a moment of expo exposing uh, uh, not just uh, Exposing everything, you know, inner and outer of yourself as well towards uh, you, and and I love also this uh, this uh, coming together, you know, like this shyness, this uh, this uh, a kind of frightness a little bit, but also also desire, you know, kind of wanted to. And also this uh, how to how to come together, how to be together in a some sense, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I think what was really nice because you invited taking care and taking time and generosity, but you also invited risk. Like it was there, <laughs> yeah. like sure. as just a little sure. drop. Sure. And I think like allowing for risk allows for vulnerability as much as safety allows for vulnerability, if that makes sense. Like, because yeah. it is a risky thing to expose oneself to, yeah. to come closer to like I mean, desire and passion and feeling and being and presence. Yeah. And but change, it's, uh, it's uh, necessary. Change is happening either you want or not, you yeah. know, it's uh, just happening. And uh, how you're handling change, it's, uh, it's very important to, uh, to, for, uh, for life as well as for dancing. Um, but change, uh, you know, it's sometimes the change means also how am I saving? How can I, I mean, I want to go into the change and I also want to protect myself from the change, you know, like so change contains like desire to go and this and also also desire to protect as well you know so for me it's like but uh, these two things uh, are going uh, aside of each other you know almost like uh, uh, sometimes uh, these these things which are which this which are contradictional or, or, or paradoxical or, or dual mm. as well you know like uh, they exist with each other. I mean, my queer persona exists uh, at the same time as my uh, Catholic upbringing, you know, like, because I cannot get rid of uh, any of this, you know, like, uh, yeah, the, I can always, the, my memory is there. I cannot erase anything that happened to me or anything that, uh, that's happening around me or anything that my eyes sees, my ears hear, yeah. my skin feels, uh, uh, mm. things that are coming to me, things that I'm approaching mm. to. The, yeah. And yet 
we can still exist in this like fragile state of change. And I think what's really beautiful, and I, 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 we, we could talk forever and talk more and more and more, yeah. and we must do this again as well. But the thing that I really want to take with me is the beauty of the quick change. You know this you know, when you go off and you quick change. But also, I mean, I used to yeah. practice quick change when yeah. I was at home. I'd come home from school and take yeah. off my uniform yeah. and put on my other clothes. And I would, I would like put it in detail. And it was so empowering to, mm. to use this materiality that mm. forms identity, but also... Mm. It carry, carries complexity because you never, like you say, you never true. You always bring mm. your history, you bring your memories and stuff with mm. you. So that to allow also those little um, functions of the quick change or of the clothing of the costume to provide yeah, space for yeah. things. And of course, there is a costumes who are uh, lasting longer and costumes who are lasting less, like yeah. everything else. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it's just uh, just you are picking. But I also like our ending very much. And our ending was probably, you see, this is the problem with the, with the, with the performing. It's like, especially if you're allowed, of course, you know. I mean, suddenly Alexander Georgiev appears in the room with his last jumping around, crazy jumping around in a steam room that probably stayed with me until this morning. And I was like, uh, I probably wanted to go in the performance and I was probably jumping with him around and with his, his other two um, fellows who danced mm -hmm. with him. And you see, I didn't know that, that uh, today ah, this Alexander will take me and you and we will uh, just jump. And I kind of, I recognize it yeah. in a, some way that, uh, that it, was, it yeah. was Alexander's... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no. energy that stayed with me. I I no, had so, the same feeling. Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. in drag, drag on <laughs> pony. I was like, oh, I I want to dance. I want to dance. Oh my god, I loved it. I loved it. I love Alexander, who is so enjoying. You know, I was like such a joy to watch. And uh, and you see, it happens uh, after. Mm. Funny thing is that uh, that everything that we absorb will uh, appear on the surface sooner or later. Yes. Yes. Every and thought, every, every feeling, view. every picture. Yeah. And and I'm so glad we got to share this and, and that we get to do it again and maybe people at home maybe get to also taste this and have a play. And I so love it. Yeah. I love it. If we do it again, uh, I would really work with the blood. <laughs> oh, because yes. Because there was like, uh, there was a oh moment God. of punk to me. It was like, <laughs> you know... You know, we have to yeah. explain. So at the beginning, I put on my contemporary dance tights, oh, my leggings. Amazing. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it, like I've done Cunningham and floor work for a long time. And, and the, the memory is that my feet would bleed all the time. And I'm suddenly standing in the middle of the room with this new costume yeah. on. And I look down and there are big piles of blood all over the floor. I, I had to like, ask you yeah. to come and help me so I don't yeah. get more blood everywhere. But you see, I, I took it as a part of the, the experience, mm. you know, and I was like, uh, just you, you said to me, like, come and uh, bring some uh, towels that we can uh, wash mm. it and we have it in the studio here. And we just did it. But to me, it was also a very nice moment, uh, a very, very unexpected moment as well, you know. And it was like, uh, like uh, uh, it reminds me on this uh, punk period, you know, like blood is all over, blood is all over, you know, like blood is all over the studio and stuff like that. And I was thinking like, oh my God, he is bleeding. We should have a punk band here just to start to playing. We should have a probably... You know, like, and then there is a point, yeah. there is a moment that we can start. So. Okay, so next time. But if people want to get in touch with you now and see your mm. work, get it, get, uh, somehow get a flavor or further mm. than this, how would they go about that? What would they do? Yeah, actually, it's always nice to, to come to see the live work. That's, uh, I pre uh, that's what's and the you best. you have a show coming up? Basically, yeah, I have a... I'm a part of the, the company called Traffic. So you can uh, Google it Traffic or you can Google it Jacques Valenta and then uh, enjoy it if you want. Uh, there is all there 
already, you know, yeah. like there is no specific website that I will point okay. people <laughs> on. Just Google it if yeah. you're interested. I will. Um, That's fine. If there is anything, I can link it in the description as well. If there's anything that no. this was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we, we must do it again uh, mm. and continue dancing and continue uh, doing quick changes and trying on uh, things in our wardrobe maybe we've forgotten and bringing them out and giving them light and giving them a dance as well. It's, it's Absolutely. wonderful. It would be such an interesting to look at uh, what we have actually. Yeah. Huh? What's <laughs> left? <laughs> Jesus, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Thank you so much.